Hey guys, here with Stuart McGill talking about the ability to pulse a muscle to fire quickly. It's interesting when I measure all of these great athletes from different sports, and then when you test their strength, a lot of them don't test that strong. Even the best in the world may not test the strongest. The guys who win the bench press uh, in the NFL combine are not the ones who are the superstars in the NFL. The point being that great athletes are pulsers. Their strength comes in pulsing, and if you pulse and you don't have a foundation from which the pulse comes from, it doesn't matter how strong, I don't care how much you bench press. If you can't create a stone and unleash with one hand here, you just leap away and fall over. You only bench press half your weight when you're standing up. So the great athletes are the best pulsers. Every one of our uh, sequence of exercises here will finish off with the highest form being a pulsed form of it. So it doesn't matter whether it's a push-up, boom, boom. Every exercise progression ends up with a pulse and transfers that neurology into the spring. And I want everyone to understand what a pulse really means. When we talk about stone and hammer, again, just for our newer coaches that are new in our network or some of the newer guys, you know, obviously the, the core is the stone, right? The arms, the extremities are the, is the hammer, are the hammers. So explain for some of those people that pulse. Give us a little bit more detail of, of exactly what that pulse means and what it is. When a muscle contracts, it does two things. It creates force, but it also creates stiffness. So a very strongly contracted muscle can't move. So sprinting is this magical blend of creating a pulse and then unleashing it for speed. Boom, boom. Just flow in relaxation, putting on muscle pulses. So the best sprinters, the guys who hit the furthest golf ball, the guys who throw the furthest football are never the strongest guys using maximum effort. It's 40 or 50% effort. Load the spring with the right pulse. Right. The guys who know how to hit strong, uh, and I've measured them, the top fighters, they don't, they're not the guys with the big arms hitting like this. It is, they stiffen, they turn the hips, and then poof. Those are the guys who you look out for. And then yep. boom, they'll just crack you right there, quick. It's, the, it's, it's creating the whip. Yeah. So stiffness. Creating boom. the whip, the Bruce Lee one inch punch, right? It's, it's right there, boom. I can hit you with all the muscle yeah. in the world I want, but until I do yeah. this. Yo, you know, it's, 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 that's, that's, now here's the magic, <laughs> that pulse, it's that millisecond of maximal contraction followed by relaxation. That, that's really, if we were to define the pulse, it's maximum contraction and stiffness for a millisecond followed by... It's about 30 milliseconds, but anyway, <laughs> it's... 30 milliseconds. Boom, and then, and then, then you're just floating. <laughs> Leave it to Dr. Well, McGill to correct me from <laughs> one millisecond to 30 milliseconds. It's 30. It's 30 milli. This guy is a research monster. I mean, everything he discusses is research based, and we've had such a great day and weekend going over his research and how it applies. And you said something very profound at dinner last night that I want the network to hear about science. And you said, science doesn't change. Well, what I meant by that was when I hear some speakers or I'll, I'll hear these so-called experts on the internet, oh, I've got this new exercise this year. So what I told you last year, we're not doing that anymore. I've changed my mind. I'm doing this new exercise. And I, I think to myself, I've never changed. The exercises I'm going to teach you today is exactly what I was teaching you in the 1980s yeah. because they were based on strong science. The body hasn't changed over the last 35 years. And if I keep changing my opinion, it means I have a very poor scientific foundation. It doesn't change. The principles don't change. You may learn small nuances about the big picture of how the body works, but uh, the bad exercises of 35 years ago are, are still the same. And we oscillate back between one-legged squats and two-legged squats, and man, pick the best tool to get the job done and yep. stay with it. Well, <laughs> that's why I've grown to respect you so much, Stuart is the fact that when you put something out, everything you do is documented by scientific research. You know, there's no guesswork. You don't go out on a limb and kind of throw things out there. And it's been so great to, to be with you and hear the information you presented this weekend that really has validated a lot of what you've done, uh, a lot of what we've done by listening to you. And you know, we're very fortunate for you to go through our manual and review our, our Parisi Speed School manual. 
I went through the manual this past week, and as I phoned you on Thursday with great reservation, I said, Bill, you're doing everything. It, yes, there's one or two things I might t tweak from a most minor perspective in the manual, but I don't know why you need me, because the manual's pretty darn good the way you, you have it. Yeah. Um, it's, the skill is putting everything in the manual into practice with precision. Yes, that's, that's the thing. getting our coaches, and that's why you're out here, to really refine some of our coaching cues and, and really going deeper into the attention to detail. That's what you've done this weekend. You've right. taken our attention to detail two feet deeper, and that's been really eye-opening for myself, our master coaches, the way you're really looking at it, and not necessarily new exercises or more exercises, but going deeper into the exercise. Can't thank you enough.